My name is Jean Baptiste and I Hello friends. My name is Jean Baptiste and Hajengwa, your canon for immigration and multicultural ministries. Today I want to first of all thank you all for having chosen to listen to me today and to give me your undivided attention for the next few minutes. And I want to thank St. Anne's, Mother Jennifer, and all the leadership and, and the recording crew who, who, who made it possible for this to happen, to have this sermon together. So thank you, and may God bless you richly. Let us pray. Grant, O oh, merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples. To the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I chose to use this collect because it has the foundation, the basis of the message for today that I am intending to share with you. And uh, for the clerical leadership who have chosen to use this sermon on this Sunday, I am really indebted. So thank you. You do not want to live too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. And when I read this question that Jesus asked his disciples, I don't see it as an invitation to walk away like others have just done. I see it as a call to commitment. That saw many followers leaving. Now he asked the question and not wanting to drive, drive them away, but to have them make a commitment, really strong commitment. From the first verse of chapter 6 of the Gospel according to John, we see Jesus drawing a great crowd around him as he was teaching them, among other things, the Beatitude. We see him miraculously feeding 5,000 men who quickly rushed into wanting to make him king over them possibly. We see him walking on waters. We see the crowd coming to see him up at his own town, the town of Capernaum. And we see him teaching in the synagogue, his synagogue, where he was uh, giving his sermons most of the time. So we see people coming to him. We see many people gathering, looking for him. And we see him now starting to tell people or to talk, a hard talk, to people who are following him. Asking or telling them really very strong uh, or kind of talk because he's, he, he, he draw people, but at the same time, he needs a commitment. Truth needs to be told as is, especially the truth about Jesus' movement. It is one thing to be a cheerleader or supporter of this movement, but it is another thing to be 
deeply committed to it. Jesus tell them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs I performed, but because you ate the loves and had your fear. See Jesus starting to teach people uh, what the true bread should be. And you see people starting grumbling now about him. Before they were excited, wanted to make him king, making him he, the, the, their own, kind of domestic, domest, domesticating him. Now that he's bringing up questions and the hard talk, aha, uh -huh, they start grumbling. And now we see him telling them, stop grumbling among yourselves. We see him telling them now that he is the bread that came down from heaven. And that is a hard truth and even hard to understand. Last week, for last Sunday, we saw Solomon being asked to ask uh, to, to, to uh, during a dream to ask for something he he thought was very important for him to, 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 to know and to have. And he told God, "You know what I need most is wisdom." And I think here we need. This kind of wisdom, friends, for us to be able to understand what Jesus is talking about here. You realize that today people are kind of reacting, reluctant to, to say, to, 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 to bring, to talk about this uh, truth that Jesus, Jesus is bringing up here today. But according to this gospel, this is not. The way of Jesus, not speaking the truth, not talking the hard talk about what Jesus is all about or what he wants. It's not Jesus' way. His words are difficult for many people in the crowd to understand and even harder to follow. He says, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. So for the, this one is, is a little bit really with the teaching that people at that time were listening and heard. It's a challenge to their heritage. Because in the teachings, this this this, this you will see it as a cannibalism, eating flesh and, and drinking blood of a human being. And it was against, in the teaching, religious teaching then was not allowed. I don't think it's allowed today. You can go out and talk about cannibalism. So, but and now he's talking about something that eat my flesh and drink my blood. That's, that's complicated. And he goes further, actually, in this teaching. And he said, your forefathers ate manna and died, but he who feeds on this bread will live forever. Because the prevailing Jewish teaching then was that cannibalism was, was not okay, and now he's attacking the, the, the head, the, their heritage about what they know, that they ate manna, and they, 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 they were happy about that. So that that's really is, was a problem for people to grasp it to understand. Then they failed to realize that Jesus was not speaking literally. He was using or teaching using the, the metaphor. Metaphor. He, he was using metaphor. This is a hard teaching and who can accept it. That's what they said. And Jesus knew 
that many people in the crowd are there for, um, uh, for what he can give, but they were looking at the superficial thing, the food, the bread, raising people who have died and healing people. But he, they, they could not see beyond what he was talking about. He, they could not see what, when he talks about the life, eternal life, they could not grasp it. Then they say, who would follow this person who is saying this? Christ's message offended some people and they decided to leave. Clearly, the, the moment of decision had come at that time. When he talks about, uh, when his talk gets tough, the people drift away. And that speaks to the real union that must take place if they would be his disciples. And that's what we, we are praying about uh, in our collect for today when we say the church is gathered together in unity by the Holy Spirit. How are we gathered together by the Holy Spirit if we cannot get and, and hear and get ready to listen to this hard talk. So, this leads me to argue that when we talk about Jesus' way, Jesus' movement, what our presenting bishop calls the Jesus movement, the Episcopal Church, being a branch of Jesus' movement, the movement that started a long, long time ago by Jesus himself, we are talking about, to some point, that we have to have that tough talk. We have to have, uh, to, to speak the truth in every situation, in all situations. And we know that truth is hard to handle. That's true. When truth comes down to us, we have to listen, and there is at least two ways to respond to that truth. We either receive it or we reject it. The people in today's gospel that we just heard, they rejected it. Some of them, or most of them, they left. They left, and there were many reasons. Some opposed it. Because they simply opposed Jesus. It was new. Even though this town is called the town of Jesus, the tunnel, where he was preaching, he was teaching, but he was new. He was different. He was from somewhere. He was bringing some, a, a, a different message. He was talking about change. And people often do not like change. Do so I know that? Many Jewish people disagreed with him and with his teachings way, way back from the very beginning. One thing, he is not a local fellow, even though he was teaching, as I said, in his own town. He was from Nazareth, and they had a saying that said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? You can read that in John chapter 1, 46. So he was, he was a foreigner in that particular place. So when, whatever he says, uh, it, it, it's new. It's 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 it's, it's strange. It's for it's foreign. It's not not their thing. And these days, some people want to see others as foreign. They want to see others not as part of them because of different reasons. 
especially now when we are in, uh, in the midst of uh, pandemics, COVID-19, racism, uh, lies, and all that, those are pandemics that are there. So to speak the truth, and especially maybe somebody can, might be seen as a foreigner. But that we need to go back to the first reading that we had today. When Solomon finished to build the, temp the temple, and at the inauguration of that temple, when the Ark of Covenant was brought in that uh, temple, when it is put in its place, and he, he feared to talk, he, he, before he started praying, the, the, the glory of God came down and covered everywhere, and prophets and priests and everyone could not do anything. That's when Solomon stood up, and in his prayer, my friends, in his prayer, this is what he said. Likewise, when a foreigner who is not of your people, Israel, comes from a distant land because of your name, talking, he is talking to God, for they shall hear of your great name, God, your mighty hand, and your outreached arm. When a foreigner comes and prays toward this house, then here in heaven, your dwelling place, and do according to all that the foreigner calls to you, so that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you, as, to, as do your people, Israel, and so that they may know that your name has been involved in this house that I have built. The point here is, he, Solomon knows that God Almighty, eternal majesty, is there. Their God lives in heaven, on earth, heavens, on earth, even in the dear, all over. So he knows in the prayer that there is no way, no, no, there is no way he can come and dwell in that temple that he just built. But he also knows that he is for all people, for everywhere. He, he covers, God covers the whole world, heavens and uh, anywhere. Now because of that, Solomon does, does not want to say, well, God, you will live here. No else you will be seen, so in it's only here. He's opening. Solomon is opening, saying, No. When even a foreigner prays to you and comes to you, listen to them and answer prayers. And if you look a little bit up in, the, in this prayer that we, what we just read today in the second reading, or the first reading, I'm sorry, it shows that. Solomon is insisting on a few things. One, he is insisting on forgiveness, on justice, on, 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 on confession, repentance. Because that's what he's all about, he's talking about here. Can, can go back and read uh, the first reading. That's what Solomon is saying. So if we want to, there, I know there are some, some, some denominations or some, some, some some churches who think this is really, they want to kind of the mystic, have God or have Jesus saying, we, we, we are the only one who know God, who know Jesus, who have uh, God. Others don't. They have to come and learn from us or be, if they are not part of us. That, that's, not, that's not what Jesus is, talk, is talking about here. Jesus is asking people, is asking us to know that there had to be some truth to be told. And yes, of course, some will drift away. But now he comes back to his uh, disciples and said, do you want also to go? 
he was looking for a formal and firm commitment from these 12. And he knew that one of them is going to betray him anyway. And he knew that uh, these people have something to also questioning or wondering. Or, uh, they, 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 he knows that. But he's asking for formal commitment. So today, my friends, as we are in this situation, as I was driving uh, to uh, St. Anne's uh, to record this sermon, I was listening to NPR and the, the BBC news was on and, and uh, we, they, were talk, they were talking about how uh, Afghanistan just fell into the hands of, of Taliban. All over the place, we, there, is, there is war, there is, there is, there is chaos. chaos chaos and people are killing each other. In this time like this, we are called as Christians to stand firm, to make a firm commitment, to be able to say the truth and follow the truth. And because of that, sometimes uh, it, it, even that truth might be challenging the tradition or Heritage that people have. Jesus was, did not hesitate to challenge the, 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 the heritage people had, but he did. So he's calling us, Jesus is calling us, his followers, members of, who are in this movement, to challenge, to, 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 to speak the truth, to have the hard talk, and to be able to bring people, even those who, who might be within what we call our tradition, our heritage. This is what we've learned. This is what we've been doing. I, I, I have been to different parishes in this diocese, and, and uh, you would see, you go to one parish, if you are not a member of that parish, if you're not, you are not there for, for a while, you, if, you, you, you find yourself like a foreigner, like a stranger. You go to coffee, oh, you don't, you, you, everyone knows each other, but you are out there. That's not what Jesus is saying, talking about. That's not what we are praying for today. We are saying the church is gathered together in the Spirit of, in the Holy Spirit, and the church is for all people. There should not be foreigners in God's, God's church. God's, uh, or everybody has to gather together, but at the same time, to speak the truth when needed. So the question to you today, my friends, question to, to you is the same question that Jesus asked his 12 disciples. Do you not want to leave? Do, do, do you not want to leave too? Do you? That's the question. Do you want to live as well? So I hope we we'll all answer like Peter answered. I'm going to read this, what he answered. This is what he said. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. I've come to believe and know that you are the, the Holy One of God. So the, 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 this question comes to us to, do you also wish to go away? And I hope and pray that we will all answer like Simon Peter when he said, to whom can we go? There are some other people out there, some other truth out there, that it is, but to whom can we go? That's the question. Honorary Jesus has the life, the word of life. So let us follow him. Let us be committed at that truth that he is talking about. And if necessary, let us have that hard talk that he himself was using when he was here on earth, preaching and talking and, and, and guiding people. It's okay to use the hard talk, say the truth. It is 
actually required and demand, demanded by Jesus for to be able to be part of that movement. That is his way. His way is the way of truth. So let's go into it. Follow him. Amen.